you know, earlier this year, like in October and in September, I moved into the new parish house. Wonderful place. It's just gorgeous, especially now with all this snow around. Getting ready for that move, I went through the process of going through everything, and do I really need to bring all this? So I ended up throwing some things away, giving some things off to people. I only kept those things that indeed give me joy. Well, a hard task I had was going through all my photo albums. Now, I'm one of those people that actually print photos. Remember printing photos? Remember how I used to do that? Okay, I actually would do that. And then I put them in albums, like chronologically. Well, as I looked at them all, I have 12 photo albums. I'm like, do I really want to carry all these around? So over the summer, what I did is I went through every one of them, and I took them out and put them in categories. Like, here are pictures of my canoe trips, or here's a, a friends from college, that kind of thing. And then with that, then I ended up throwing out or giving away pictures because, I mean, how many pictures of walleye do you need? Not really. Or how many sunsets do you need? So I was able to kind of downsize those 12 photo albums down to three. And they're in categories. And this one contains photos of my family. And what happened in the process is I'm going through all the photos. I really had to determine what's most important to me about my family. I mean, of course, they're all great pictures, but which ones do I really want to hang on to because they are important to me? And I got to thinking that, indeed, I think that's our challenge, especially on this feast day, to really try to figure out what is important to us as family. Now, later today, the whole Anderson clan, we are gathering down in Elk River for our Christmas celebration. There are like 58 of us. So we determined some years ago that it's more important that we all get together than having to need to get together on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. We decided, no, you know, that's just too busy for a lot of people. They couldn't all come, so let's pick a day when we all can be there. But even within our family unit, we have kind of over the years determine what's important to us. For example, we don't talk about politics when we get together. I mean, there was no official rule or anything. We just don't do it just because we say that's not important. Because inevitably there's going to be people thinking differently. I, I, actually, some of my family members, I have no idea what they think on politics. I have no idea how they voted. I don't need to know. But what's important is that we get together to support each other. And as you can imagine, with 58 of us, there's a lot of differences, and there's a lot of different ways of living. For example, my one nephew and his wife have chosen not to baptize their kids. I have another nephew. He's now engaged to his boyfriend. So we have all these different things going on in our family, but what we decided to do, even though some people may like or object with different things, that the most important thing for us is to support one another as family. And I believe that's the invitation you all have. Your immediate family and even your extended family. Because you've got to figure out your own family rules or what's important, such as like, you know, is your family a lot of swearing when you get together? I mean, what do you say about people looking at their phone when you're eating a meal? Do you, do you pray together before you eat? All those kinds of things. Now what's wonderful about this feast day, and especially about the gospel reading, you just heard it, is that it presents the Holy Family not in a perfect light. They screwed up. The parents lost their kid. And can you imagine that? And so they are looking for him, Mary and Joseph. They finally found him after days. But how do you yell at Jesus? I mean, how do you... But they do it. They kind of said, we you gave us great concern. We're disappointed in you. And the amazing thing is that Jesus says, okay, you're right. Okay. I know what's important to you. I mean, like, you're setting the rules here, and I'm going to follow that. With families, you've got to figure out what's important. And even in some of your families, 
when you've got teenagers or older children. Many times there's always a struggle about what's most important because some of you teenagers, you think you are a god and you that you know more than your parents. But look at the example of Jesus. He said, okay, I'm going to obey you. Because I think in every family unit, it's the parents' job to do the best they can to raise their kids. That means it's the parents' job to kind of set what's most important. This is the curfew. Or this is what's appropriate to wear or not wear. This is how we talk. And for you kids, even though you may not like all this stuff, your parents are trying their best. I've never met parents who deliberately say, ooh, what rule can we make up today to really make our daughter mad at us? Or, or what can we do to really upset our son today? I know, let's have to do this. They don't do that at all. They are trying their best to present to you what is most important so that you can learn what's most important. We're all struggling to do this in our family units, whether it's your needy family or your larger family. Because you've got to ask your questions you know, when you get together with family. Do you always need to be right? I mean, can you let go of some things as opposed to you need to have the last word and tell someone so other wrong? Or among your family members? Do you have to have control? Can somebody else do something or have an opinion? Or do you always have to be wonderful in your family? You've got to make sure you, everything looks like everything's together. We don't have any problems. We always have to make sure that the neighbors think we're great all the time. It's a lot of work. What's most important to you in your family? Here's some guidelines. Start having compassion. Yeah, there are people in your family who are not perfect. We get it. But maybe instead of just thinking how you have an opinion only, or what you think is the only way to live, maybe start thinking about what they're going through. People act either out of love or a cry for help. And perhaps your way of doing or thinking is not the only way. <coughs> Another thing. Opt out of the petty stuff. Really, do you need to keep bringing that up again and again? Is that really so important that you can't let go of it? As opposed to, it's more important that we just get along. Do you get stuck in something, even that happened decades or years ago? Another thing. Stop giving away your power. Which means stop caring about what others think, especially some of you adults with your adult siblings. You know, really, you're not going to agree with everybody, but maybe you got to let go of some things. Maybe you set the standard about how you treat one another. Even if they're going to act this way, you act differently. You know, families are great, of course. That's why we have to stay on that. But it's been said that 99% of all families are dysfunctional in some way. And the other 1% are in denial. <laughs> we all have work to do. But the Holy Family presented a model for us about what's important. Because after this debacle of losing their kid, they regrouped. They talked. And they started over. Perhaps that's something you could do in your family. Be like Jesus did when he went to the temple. He sat and <coughs> listened, asked questions. Maybe you could do that with your family. Just listen. But maybe regroup. Maybe start over. Give those family members some 